The Netherlands, often referred to as Holland, is renowned not just for its tulips and windmills, but also for its unparalleled expertise in land reclamation. Have you ever wondered how a country can expand its territory without waging wars or buying land? Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel in today's video. We will explore the expertise of the Dutch and discover the fascinating methods the Netherlands employs to defy nature and add new territories to its map. If you look at the historical map of the Netherlands from the 1300s, it accurately depicts the country's size during that period. It's worth noting that rising sea levels over time should have significantly reduced the country's landmass by approximately 65% compared to what's portrayed on this map. However, what's truly fascinating is that this scenario did not unfold as expected. If we move forward seven centuries and examine a current map of the Netherlands, we will find that the country has not shrunk. Instead, it has expanded by 17%. You will be surprised to know that this occurred without the Dutch taking possession of the land from neighboring countries like Belgium or Germany, the only two nations bordering the Netherlands. So what exactly happened? They innovated by forming new territories and protected the areas below sea level from vanishing into the sea. This video will uncover that the Dutch's relationship with the sea, which reveals a lot about their nation, its traditions, and past and present identity. Ever wondered why the Netherlands is dotted with windmills? Or why Amsterdam boasts of its dams? Or even why the world's tulips predominantly hail from this region? Interestingly, all these elements are linked to the Dutch's unique bond with the sea. The iconic Dutch windmills aren't just for show or merely for grinding grains. These architectural wonders played a pivotal role in their tussle with the sea. Contrary to popular belief, their primary function was not grain grinding, but to transfer water from one area to another. This technique was crucial in the Dutch strategy to carve out new territories. The process typically initiated with the partitioning of the targeted area, where barriers were erected to prevent seawater from overloading the region. These barriers, called dikes, became essential elements of the Dutch landscape, forming protective shields against the interrupting ocean waters. Above these dikes, the Dutch erected windmills, cleverly utilizing the power of the wind to drain water from the enclosed regions and direct it back into the ocean. This method gave rise to patches of land that lay beneath sea level, named polders. Windmills emerged as the keystone in this battle against the ocean's relentless advances. Though contemporary drainage methods have evolved beyond the need for windmills, the Netherlands retains approximately 1,000 of these iconic structures scattered across the country. Let us turn our attention to the Netherlands' beauty of tulips. The reclaimed land was soil composed of sand, salt, and clay, which might not be suitable for conventional farming. However, the Dutch discovered a unique advantage in this type of soil. Over time, with a blend of rain, sunshine, and clever gravitation, the seabed soil transforms into highly fertile ground, ideal for cultivating a particular crop flowers, most notably tulips. These vibrant blossoms symbolize Dutch culture, marking a colorful chapter in their history and ongoing agricultural success. Flowers, in particular, have become a thriving industry in the country. Notably, the Netherlands accounts for a staggering 80% of the world's tulip supply, underscoring its dominance in the floral market. Indeed, no other place on earth rivals the Netherlands for cultivating tulips. But wait, yet, upon closer inspection of these fields, a striking observation emerges. Most of them are covered not in flowers but grass. Grass. The decision to prioritize grass cultivation over flowers on these lands may seem unreasonable. However, the vast quantity of available land poses a unique challenge. With the Netherlands already accounting for most of the global tulip production, growing more flowers on these reclaimed polders would result in an oversupply. Given the soil's unique composition, traditional crops weren't a viable option. Remember, few plants thrive in such conditions, leaving grass as the primary choice. However, humans don't consume grass, making it less appealing. So what is the solution we would say cheese? Wait here as we unveil the secret. Dutch introduced cows to these areas to capitalize on the growing of the grass, the Dutch introduced cows to these areas. These animals happily grazed on the grass, converting it into valuable milk. Yet milk poses its own challenges, as it has a limited shelf life and is not particularly productive when sold as is. Cheese. The challenge with milk is its short shelf life and limited profitability. To address this, the Dutch innovated by transforming milk into cheese, which not only has a longer lifespan and fetches a better price. Enter Gouda, a delightful Dutch cheese celebrated globally for its rich sweetness and creamy texture. 
it swiftly rose to prominence, becoming a top seller and a significant revenue source for the Dutch. Thanks to their ambitious land reclamation efforts over the decades, the Netherlands stumbled upon their two most profitable exports, dairy and flowers. This journey underscores the Dutch's remarkable adaptability and resourcefulness. Dikes Another innovative approach was the construction of the dikes. For the Dutch, dikes aren't just structures, they're lifelines. Given that a staggering 65% of their land is below sea level, these dikes play a crucial role in preventing it from being submerged. The process commences with a core of sand, which is subsequently enveloped by a substantial layer of clay to ensure waterproofing and resist erosion effectively. Furthermore, beneath the waterline, an additional layer of crushed rock is added to mitigate the impact of wave action. Interestingly, the grass atop these dikes is intended to by humans but by sheep. These animals ensure the grass remains thick, and crucially, they compact the soil as they roam. It might seem like an odd strategy to many, but then again, it's the Dutch we're talking about. While some might find it amusing, one can't argue with their success. They've been holding back the sea for centuries, and here I am, still apprehensive about a simple beach swim. They're onto something. The expertise of the Dutch is undeniable especially when looking at the closure of the dikes from 90 years ago. This dike, stretching 32 kilometers, converted a vast portion of the North Sea inlet into a freshwater lake. But how did it become freshwater when it was originally part of the ocean? Usually, it would remain salty. However, the lake, now called the Ijsselmeer, links to a river with the same name. As time went by, this river refilled the lake with fresh water. Additionally, the Dutch consistently removed salt water transforming it into a freshwater lake. While there are undeniable environmental implications to such endeavors, the reality is that these measures have shielded the region from floods for nearly 90 years. Given this, it seems the Dutch deem it a worthy trade-off. Take for instance, Flevoland, an artificial island as vast as Luxembourg. Artificial island? Just 35 years ago, Flevoland was nothing more than open water. Today it boasts a thriving community with over 400,000 residents the land which didn't even exist three and a half decades ago. It's a surreal thought to reside on terrain that shouldn't be there by nature's design. But for the Dutch, who have been mastering the seas for ages, it's just another chapter in their storied history. Canals, Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, shows off its skill with the sea. See all those water paths. Those are canals made by people. Why did they make them? These canals facilitated the transport of goods to and from Amsterdam but they also allowed for easy transportation within the city, which was immensely valuable during the 15th and 16th centuries. The story of the Dutch and their conquest of non-existent land is a testament to human determination and ingenuity. As we wrap up this captivating tale, tell us which innovations surprised you the most in the comment section below. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to watch more videos like these.